cloud. All right, perfect. Okay, so what's up everybody? And thank you for joining us uh, today. Jack and I will be sharing an update on fund one and what is up next for JCAM, uh, including fund two in our 2022 outlook. I am William Bonatti, partner in the JCAM fund and I'm obviously joined by Jack Krupe, principal and founder. Um, Jack, how are we doing today? Uh, doing great, doing great. Uh, excited to share uh, uh, some of this exciting news uh, with our uh, with our investors. Yeah, absolutely. So um, to get us started, why don't you give us uh, kind of an update on where we are with, with Fund One uh, as of today? Sure, sure. So we launched Fund One uh, just uh, the last few days of September of 2020. That was our first, uh, first investment allocations. And uh, you know, we sit here today in mid-February. And uh, we've made over 30 allocations into uh, individual properties. A few of them were uh, pulled together in funds, uh, but a majority of them were individual uh, syndications. Um, over 80% were multifamily. Uh, we have a few student housing allocations and we have a uh, one ground up senior housing and a very interesting condo conversion. So I um, was really, really proud of the, uh, of the allocations we've made uh, in fund one and uh, with a combination of the, the value add component um, of, of these properties that we've executed with our partners, uh, many of the properties uh, with renovated units, the rents are up over 30% and that adds significant value uh, to the portfolio. So um, really, really exciting. And uh, you know, just given the way the fund is structured with our 70 30 profit split it, it just makes sense to uh to close fund one to to new investments and uh start uh the return of capital uh in, in the coming months so um what that means is um up until now our investors have been receiving their preferred return payments paid every quarter and those payments have been made on time like clockwork since the fund uh, started in 2020. Uh, moving forward, in addition to paying the preferred return, we will begin to start returning capital as well. So when an investor logs into the portal, they'll actually see two line items. One item will be their preferred return for that quarter, and another line item will be a return of capital. And uh, the preferred return in future quarters will then be calculated on the amount of capital that is unreturned. So we, we have provided most of our investors a chart that was a estimate of what that would look like. But uh, now that it's happening, you know, I'll encourage any investors to, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to, to anyone on our team. We could walk you through uh, the syndication pro portal exactly how to, uh, how to see those numbers. And the last point is that um, we are, for a period of time, going to continue to leave open the 10% share class. Uh, it's very simple. It's 10% paid quarterly or 10% annually paid quarterly, um, but there is no participation in the profits. So that 70-30 that profit split, just once we close the fund, we can't let anyone else in for uh, just contractually in the way the fund is structured. Uh, but uh, you know, given where we are in the market, and where yields are, uh, anyone interested in 10%, uh, we still have that, that opportunity available. Yeah, yeah, that's a great opportunity for, for those looking to, to beat inflation in a, in a safe place. Um, Jack, why don't you, uh, can you share with us, um, you know, we had a lot of questions around timing on return to capital and what that looks like. I know that, that we've had some internal conversations that, that a few assets may, um, Maybe selling or, or closing or exiting a little sooner than we than we anticipated. Um, do you have any additional color for the uh, for the group on that? Sure. So yeah, we, we we never know for sure until a contract is is you know signed and closed and the and the money is, is in the bank. But uh, um, a number of our uh, of our assets uh, you know, had received unsolicited offers, um, and in some cases the offers were for higher than the projected three year. Uh, sale price in, in, in many cases, less than a year. 
So there's a few assets that uh, have been held even less than a year that once we hit the 12 month time frame, um, where it would be a capital gains, a long term capital gain instead of a short term capital gain, there, there is a chance a few assets are going to exit earlier than expected. Very similar to our Phoenix asset, which sold in 12 months and two days. Um, that, that was an exact same scenario where it could have probably sold a month earlier, but it made sense to structure the sale to at least wait one year. Um, so what that means for return of capital, it really depends on what sells, but it's not out of the question that 10 to 20% of capital may be returned um, during 2022. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, potentially, if not 2022, a, a more significant amount of capital may return in 2023. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. Um, so, yeah, so we're going to have the 10% share class open. Do we have any timeline on when, when that'll be available till, or is it kind of. Um, yeah, pro probably for um, probably for another few months. Uh, and it really, uh, it also depends on, on fund two's structure. So um, probably a good time to segue. Yeah. Into, yeah, absolutely. Why don't we jump two. into that? So, yeah what does fund two or why don't we share what fund two uh, structure and uh, what that's going to look like for for our investors sure so so fund two in a diversified fund is going to be uh, very similar to fund one um, we're providing either a six percent or an eight percent preferred return and uh, the same 70 30 profit split meaning investors get 70 percent of the profits uh, for essentially until every asset is sold and we only get paid once our investors have received their preferred return and all of their capital. Um, we do have one other share class um, that is closer to a fixed return, and that is a 12% fixed. And with that 12% fixed, 6% of it is paid current, so a quarterly distribution of a 6% annual return, and the other 6% is paid at the sale or refinance of the property. So uh, one of the things happening in the, um, you know, just given, given where the economy is at, given how red hot real estate is, is uh, it's getting harder and harder to find deals that pay a current pay above, you know, above a 10%. Um, you know, a lot of uh, investors used to invest in bridge loans or hard money or fix and flip loans to earn a higher interest rate. But the fact is those loans now uh, are down to, in some cases, 8%. So um, we wanted to give uh, investors that are looking for a fixed rate um, the ability to get it, but uh, it's broken up into two components, just a 6% current pay, and there's a catch-up payment to, to get to a 12% annual. So um, you know, it's the first time we're offering something of that structure, but uh, you know, I, I think just based on discussions with certain investors, uh, you know, it's an option we wanted to... Uh, to put together for, for our investor base that's looking for for uh, just a fixed to know rate. exactly what they're going to make. Yeah, know rate. exactly yeah. what they're going to get. And it, and it makes sense for a lot of the qualified money as well, right? Exactly, exactly. Awesome. So in addition to fund two, we have some exciting news as well to share um, with with what's what we're going to be doing alongside fund two. Uh, in terms of giving our investors the opportunity to uh, participate directly in individual deals. Um, so Jack, maybe you want to speak a little bit to that. Sure, sure. So uh, yeah, it's very exciting. You know, we, have, uh, we have a base of investors that, that likes the diversification, but uh, we also have a number of investors that uh, like to uh, really dive in on individual deals or like certain markets and uh, you know, maybe want to be invested in the fund, but also go kind of extra put extra money into, into select deals they like. So um, we have a platform to, uh, to do that as well now. And uh, it's, it's gonna be called the JKM Flexible Allocation Fund. And uh, what's exciting about it is the way the fund is structured, it's closer to a brokerage account where investors can pick and choose which investments they want to invest in and for how much uh, money. Um, and after the, the initial minimum is gonna be $50,000, but after the first investment, uh, there's going to be opportunities to potentially invest even less than $50,000 in future deals. And uh, it really opens up a lot of flexibility for us. Um, you know, one of the, the bigger challenges of, of doing individual deal by deal syndications was the, just the legal and the compliance for 
smaller offerings. And uh, you know, this new platform is, is, is solves all those problems. So um, investors are going to be able to, to have a number of options and a number of markets to invest in, um, as well as to continue to invest uh, with the diversified fund, uh, you know, across and, and, and almost, I'd imagine almost every deal that's in that's marketed deal by deal, the diversified fund will also be investing in. So it'll give the investors the option to really invest either with the diversified fund inside of it or alongside mm -hmm. the diversified fund or a combination of both. Yeah, I mean, we had a, a few investors that, that wanted to participate in, in just the direct, um, direct project or the individual project uh, and not necessarily the diversified fund. Um, and then also we had you know, uh, investors that wanted to participate in the diversified fund, but also wanted to out make a greater allocation to an individual property. So uh, it gives a lot of flexibility um, and options to our investor base uh, going forward. So that's an exciting development for us in, in 2022. Um, why don't you, Jack, uh, you mentioned that it's getting, you know, with the way that the market is going, it's getting harder to find, um, opportunities and projects that have, you know, that eight to 10 or eight to 12% um, current pay or cash on cash. So what are we looking at for 2022 and fund to in terms of allocations, like what type of assets? Sure. So, um, yeah, we've been to a number of, of, of industry conferences over the last few months. So a lot of the, a lot of our, uh, our allocations are really based on just our own data because we're in 30 plus projects right now and we're monitoring hundreds of deals uh, through, through our partners in, in various markets. So um, multifamily is still gonna be a big component of, of our investment base, um, especially the workforce housing, which has been you know, at the forefront of, of, of the fund one's investments. And uh, we're still bullish on that asset class, um, especially with inflation, especially with the cost of materials, the supply chain issues, we're still buying these properties well below replacement cost. So, you know, it is an asset class we're going to continue to invest in. Um, the challenge is that due to the amount of money chasing deals, um, the actual entry cap rates are continuing to compress. And, uh, you know, it's just a very competitive market. And uh, with, with the heavy value add, which is, you know, generally the type of asset that yields the highest returns, the first year, most of the money is being put towards increasing the rents and renovating the units. So there's not a lot of uh, cash flow available to pay immediate preferred returns. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a good part of our investor base wants that mailbox money. And, and that includes, uh, you know, myself, I actually, you know, I don't live off of the funds management fees. I, I live off of the passive income from, from the rents. So, so this is something I need personally as well. And, and, you know, one of the, um, you know, one of the, the points that we always make with this fund is you're investing alongside myself. I built this fund um, basically to, allow other people to invest alongside me because I was putting my own money into these deals anyway. So in addition to multifamily, um, we've always had the ability to do mobile home and storage, which are both very recession resistant. And, um, you know, we, we'll just because of the run we had with multifamily and just got of a string of really great deals, we, we just didn't allocate as much to mobile home and storage as, as we might have originally planned, not because of anything wrong with those asset classes, um, those asset classes do tend to have a little bit higher current cash flow. So in fund two, I would expect to see some allocations into multifamily and storage. Um, triple net leasing, um, which is very much slow and steady, um, but uh, current cash flow. So those deals will spin off maybe a less, less of an overall IRR. So it doesn't look as exciting as 20% or 99% in the case of our Phoenix deal but it will pay a current coupon. And you know, from month one on, it's spitting off cash flow. So we're gonna be balancing the portfolio with some more cash flow producing assets. Awesome, and, yeah, thanks. Yeah, and, th and then one last component is, there's a number of funds that have been, alloc been buying, similar to our fund one, that had been buying assets since 2021 that have built in appreciation already. So one of the other components you may see in fund two is, is more of a fund of funds. And these groups will give us preferential terms because we're coming in for a larger dollar amount. So um, 
you know, one of the ones we're looking at now has assets from early 2021 that are already up 30% plus in value. And we have the ability to, to get in in 2022 based on 2021 pricing. So that's something we'll likely see in fund one. I think that's uh, a very good hedge because we're, you know, we're, we're buying 2021 assets and, mm -hmm. you know, also going forward in addition to those, um, you know, we're constantly monitoring the market. So as, as interest rates move, um, the benefit of the diversified fund is that as rates move, we can adjust our strategy, you know, every single week or month as we're looking at assets. So uh, that includes uh, looking at future sale prices as rates go up, we'll be we're able to monitor is the exit cap rate uh, on track with where rates may be in two or three years. So the real benefit of, of coming in with us as opposed to picking one deal is if you pick one deal, you know, you're, you're, you're in that deal. And if rates move and the projections weren't right, it's, uh, you know, could be challenging. Whereas if you dollar cost average in with us over 10 to 20 deals over the course of a year, if, if rates move or if just the economy changes, we'll, we'll be adapting as the year goes on. Yeah. So that regardless of what happens, we'll be in a good position. Yeah, thanks, Jack. That's a really great point. Um, so, but overall, you, you're still very bullish on multifamily, uh, you know, because of the fundamentals um, in the markets we're in, you know, the, the, the strong population growth, um, you know, the lack of, of housing, um, you know, you mentioned the replacement costs, it still costs a lot more to, to build, um, you know, new multifamily uh, properties versus, versus renovate. Um, and then what are your thoughts uh, regarding the interest rates? I know you talked about that briefly, but sure, so, that's a yeah. frequently asked question. Um, you know, everyone has an opinion on what's going to happen with interest rates, um, but maybe you could share, share uh, your thoughts. Sure. So, I mean, it's, I'm, I'm pretty confident interest rates are going up. I think that's the general consensus. Um, yeah. So we're, we're, we're planning accordingly. You know, what I think is, is going to happen though is you still have supply chain issues. And I think inflation is going to still outpace interest rates. And there's still so much money chasing yield that I think interest rates will go up, but the cap rates, which is the, you know, which, which generally move in the same direction. I do not think cap rates will expand as much as interest rates go up, meaning mm -hmm. investors will continue to work for a slightly less return in the future uh, because of just the, so much money that's been printed. Yeah, the amount of equity of looking yield. for, yeah. 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 I mean, so the, I, debt, so I the debt will still be there, right? Um, but there's a ton of equity uh, looking for, for a home, so. Correct, correct. And, and look, over the course of history, you know, interest rates in general have been in that four to five percent range, not the three percent that they've been for the last four or five years. So, so if anything, we're returning to you know a, a, a more more of a, a sense of normalcy, and uh, you know that may also bring good buy opportunities as well. Um, with rates a point or two higher, you know, the market will will make some adjustments, and there could be there could be some opportunistic purchases in the future as well. With if the you know, if the market just normalizes as opposed to, you know, somewhat of a frenzy over the last uh, year or two yeah. in, in certain markets. Yeah, maybe a little bit of a shakeout of those operators that were really pushing the numbers to, to make those deals work. Um, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. the, yeah, that's really the biggest risk is, uh, you know, people that are overly aggressive using bridge financing, um, you know, for example, the most recent deal we allocated to is only 67 loan to value and has fixed rate debt from Fannie Mae. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we are yeah, in some bridge year, deals. Right? Yeah. Yeah. No, and that's not, you know, we are in a few deals with bridge, but you know, the deals with bridge that we're in are value add where, you know, the operators have proven themselves that they can renovate units very quickly. And we're, we're generally out of the bridge either through sell or refi in, you know, within a very short period of time. Yeah, and they also purchase caps, interest rate caps. Correct, uh, correct. There's interest rate caps, and uh, you know, with with when you're moving rents to from uh, the, the specific operator that I'm mentioning that we, you know, we we did well on the Phoenix deal, and we're in yeah. other deals in Vegas mm -hmm. and Dallas with, uh, they're moving rents from a thousand fifty to fourteen hundred. So, within within three to six months, uh, these buildings are worth ten to twenty percent more than uh, than purchase. So, you know, there's a lot of uh, 
um, you know, a lot of value increase very quickly. And that really does, um, you know, take a lot of the risk off the table, um, yeah. you know, with, with these structures. Yeah. And the other, another point there too, Jack, is that a lot of the, the operators that, um, you know, we've allocated to have been, you know, pretty conservative on their, um, their underwriting and, you know, that's all great. Everyone says they're conservative on their underwriting, but, you know, when you're averaging, you know, between two and 4% rental growth um, on your underwriting and you're seeing double digit rent growth, um, you know, that, that opens up a lot of room, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, many of our deals, the rents are up 30 to 40%, but uh, that's, that's based on overall dollars, but a lot of them, the, the actual growth is 10 to 15% above the pro forma projections as well. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, you know, it, it's been, it's been a really good run with really with the, you know, a number of very strong operators and uh, we're excited to continue this uh, for, for fun too, both on the, the diverse, yeah, both providing diversification and for select deals, uh, the, the ability to come directly into an individual offering. Yeah. So Jack, you mentioned um, continuing multifamily, self-storage, maybe mobile, uh, triple net lease and uh are we looking at industrial is that um, in there? yes I, yeah um i actually made a personal investment into an industrial deal um yeah it wasn't something we highlighted in fund one but it's a very uh, you know very hot asset class and it's been for a number of years and i think it just makes sense with uh you know with with the amazonification of the economy yeah um e -commerce. you know just shipping logistics e-commerce um, you know, it's a, it's a great asset class. It's, um, growing there's, uh, you know, certain markets, there's a limited supply of, of industrial space with, with increased demand. So, um, you know, it's, it's a great opportunity. Yeah. Another asset class that we that we'd look at. I just wanted to mention that. Yeah. And we, we did not highlight, uh, you know, we are in a ground up deal in senior housing. Um, there, there could be some other, you know, a, a small allocation to ground up opportunities, um, you know, I, I generally like those deals. Um, and frankly, the only reason we probably won't do more is just the cash flow situation. Um, you know, many of our investors, at least in a diversified fund, want cash flow. Um, I think in the individual allocation, flexible allocation fund, I think, uh, you know, we, we may see a number of ground up opportunities where the returns can be, can be much higher, but you know, what you sacrifice is cash flow for the first year or two. So that's going to be, yeah, that's going to be exciting because there's great deals that we, we perhaps have. Pass, we did, just, we passed on because they didn't have yeah. current, current cash flow. Yeah. yeah. There's yeah, a lot of development that, that, deals like that. I mean, there's a ton of momentum uh, in the build to rent space. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. But not ideal for, for our fund because, you know, we need that, that current cash flow. So, so that'll be great because there's, there's, tons of really good opportunities that are strictly growth um, that you'll be able to participate in uh, on a direct uh, project by project basis. So anything else that I'm missing that we want to, um, that we want to talk about for, for 2022? Um, no, I think that's other than that, uh, you know, we're hoping to launch fund two um, by early March. So um, you know, we're, we're excited to, uh, to put that out. We're hoping to touch base, uh, individually with, uh, all of our current investors just to, uh, uh, make sure they, you know, know the success we're having in fund one and how to plan for, uh, the potential return of capital, uh, in, in the coming months. And, uh, just to get, you know, get some feedback on, you know, how they're doing, what the, are they, you know, are they, are we helping meet their goals? Or is there anything else we can do to help our investors? And anyone else who, who's listening or who's been on our mailing list, um, you know, we're at a stage where we want to, you know, we're, we're, we're looking to engage uh, with the community. So I'm hoping uh, this video is helpful and uh, really encourage everyone to, to reach out um, through, through the website, directly to either of us, social media. And, uh, you know, it'd be, it'd be great to connect one-on-one -on -one and uh, understand what your investment goals are and how we may be able to, to work together to help you meet them. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome, Jack. Thanks so much for, uh, for, for taking some time to, to share uh, Fund 1 updates and the exciting news about Fund 2 and, and 2022. Um, unless you got anything else for us, we'll, we'll wrap it up for today. 
Yeah, let's wrap it up. But we'll be uh, we'll be more active, and uh, the podcast is going to be launching at some point next month or two. Oh also, yeah, so that's, that's, uh, not, we, that's we, the uh, big big news there too, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so why don't uh, yeah. let's why don't you, why don't you share uh, sort of uh, the name of the podcast and, and sort of what the what the purpose uh, of that uh, will be? Sure. So so the podcast is going to be called the Alternative Investor Mastermind, and uh, it's really about helping. Uh, helping investors create wealth without Wall Street. And uh, we're gonna be talking about uh, various alternatives, um, everything from the real estate and syndication deals, which will be a bulk of it. But uh, we're also gonna talk about other alternatives, uh, you know, a little bit of crypto, Bitcoin, uh, being down here in Puerto Rico, I'm surrounded by uh, a lot of uh, crypto enthusiasts. So we're gonna we're be a little broader in addition to real estate and really uh, help, uh, help people learn about uh, you know, all of the, all of the options, uh, you know, outside of the traditional stocks and bonds. Yeah. Just a lot of other interesting stuff that isn't uh, mainstream, so to speak. Uh, I'm yeah, hoping that you're going to let investors I'm, here. Oh, sorry. Well, I'm hoping that you're going to do uh, a podcast on, on credit cards and the points oh, game. Yeah. That's the other that's, part of it too. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I mean, ultimately it's going to be really just opening up a little bit more. Um, I also have a number of personal investments outside of real estate as well. So, you know, it's really going to be, you know, you know, somewhat of a, of just an open book of what I'm investing in, what I'm looking at. Um, for example, I made an oil and gas investment um, last month. And, you know, I did that because a number of our investors are high W2 earners and, um, there's actually some some different tax incentives for oil and gas that don't limit passive losses. So could allow, you know, a seven figure earner to potentially offset their W-2 income. So there's things I explore personally at a small scale just to, to learn and to, you know, potentially bring that knowledge to the community. So that's the type of thing you're going to see, um, you know, across the board. And, and then the lifestyle side of it too, that you mentioned, I'm a big points and miles enthusiast and, uh, you know, part of this, the whole alternative assets and passive income is, you know, what do you do to enjoy it afterwards? So um, being a business yeah. owner, it's, uh, it's great to be able to take advantage of the credit card expenses when you have them and, uh, you know, take, uh, take amazing vacations uh, in style with, uh, you know, just by being efficient with the way you spend your money. Yeah. And taxes, right? I mean, you moved to Puerto Rico. <laughs> Oh, Dude, absolutely. Taxes, taxes will be so. a big, uh, a big component of it. Um, so yeah, it's going to be exciting and, uh, you know, you're going to be a big part of it as well. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, hopefully, yeah. uh, hopefully people enjoy it. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. So keep a lookout for, uh, Jack's Jack's podcast coming out. Um, and then also, uh, fun too. So awesome guys. Thanks for joining us. Hope this was informative and, uh, we'll talk to y'all soon. Thanks everybody. Okay. See ya.